Now, Riddick, you and I are going to discuss something very, very, very important. It is the draft of game number two. So, as we go Ooh. in here, you can go through here with Bloodlust. What do you think about this composition? Bloodlust got the Makoa for free again? They did steal away the Barrack, but Makoa, come on, guys. Makoa is probably an S tier tank, and they just let it go away for free. And Fury is available to them too. Leviathan Makoa and the Soul of Blessing Fury? Do you know what you've done? Oh, and what have, have well, you just... done? <laughs> But I'm seeing Bloodlust like the Talus. I'm, I'm expecting Duffit back on that again. He played extremely well and he made the champion work well for him. I'm going to see a resurgence of Talus picks in, in, in the meta and I'm going to have to start banning him out. Um, Crisis, <laughs> once again, sticking to the Drogos. It kind of worked well. They did dominate last uh, game in terms of damage. I think that their target prioritization was off and that boils down to communication. Let's see if they can manage that a little bit better. What do you think, Wuffy? Well, uh, if you look at the bans, the drafts make way more sense, especially since they banned out the Inara over on Crisis. They don't want to hassle with Saita anymore on that. <laughs> That's for sure. Oh, yeah. uh, and they also banned the Androxus, so they didn't have someone that could burst down their low their lower hp champions and if they go with this they have drogos leon fernando maldamba and ash and i really really love this pick getting an ash together with a maldamba or a fernando it's really good because then you have two tanks that can do both both control the point and pressure uh going into the back line but still we have we have a willow and a talus over on the side of bloodlust and we've seen what talus can do in their squad and as we heard from jay he has seen sykes on willow so we i must presume that sykes will be on the willow <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I'm gonna, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. But I'm really, really glad that um, Crisis pulled around and decided, okay, cool, we lost the last game. We only had a single tank. It was the squishiest tank in the game. Let's put some more pro point pressure on. And Ash has a flat cannon. It is one of the only weapons in the game that can contest, contest the high ground from the low ground, which is very, very important in Stone Keep. You've got that overpass in the, in the keep that just stands there. And if a Drogos gets on there, if, if a Blaster Champion gets on there like Willow, you're gonna have to have someone to take her down. And unfortunately, Andro's banned out, so you're going to need a plan there. And I think Ash is a really good way to just do that. But Willow also dominates point tanks. So we're going to have to see how well that plays out. Thank you so much for your insight, Riddick. We're quickly going to look at the point system again in, in, the, in the case that you've forgotten. Uh, also, uh, a little shout out to the creator of this infographic. It's Blitzy Boy. Thank you so much for the creation of the rule set of the point system. We have a, a game number two here in the second game of this set. And if Crisis takes this back and gets it to a 1-1 set, both teams will receive two legacy points. That is so important for, for Crisis as well as Bloodlust. Of course, Bloodlust wants to have the three legacy points in their favor, but a draw would be the second best option. Yeah, I so, mean, a draw is better than a loss. Yeah, of course. <coughs> well, with no further ado, we're going to take a short break and return to you with the game number two between Bloodlust and Crisis. My name is Wolfie DG, and you're here with Ridiculously Average and GGJ for the Legacy League Season 1. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard to uh, the Magistrates League second matchup between Bloodlust and Crisis. Let's go through to the rosters. On the side of Bloodlust, we have Shrally playing the Solar Blessing. Furia, the fit on the Inner Strength. Talus, Stop Me V1 on the Leviathan. Makoa, Sykes on the Tinker and Beric. And Orden playing the Nightshade Willow. What is going on on the side of Crisis, Riddick? We have the Fortress Breaker Ash for Tatoxi right there. Fraza having death and taxes at the end. No need for Cauterize right there. Scorch Fireball for Snoofy on the Maco on the Fernando, excuse me. Combustible Drogos for Rip Julian once again and Znos. Spirits chosen Maldamba as we head into this first point fight already. Bloodlust taking the left hand side. Woofy, take it away, my man. 
Well, what I can see right here is that Castle is in their favor already on the side of Crisis. They chose to advance fast and that was the right choice. Now with Snoofy on the top, dealing a bit of damage with his fireballs and Stop Me had to go down. He couldn't really pressure. Now with Crisis having most control of the point actually. Yeah, From the get go, decided. my bro. <laughs> Crisis decided, okay, cool. We, we've got two tanks right now. Let's put one of them to use. They got the Ash on the point. They started getting that chip capture. And immediately you start seeing the this game. What I did notice there is Ordate on that Willow. He was playing from the low ground, but Crysis still suffered because of that. Because of that blast radius, he was able to put pressure on from the low ground. Even though he wasn't able to take advantage, he still managed to put Crysis back. And they are in a bit of a disadvantage right now, but they do have that chip capture. They just need to make it back. As Darfit goes down, they can start pushing in now. Auden though in the other side on Castle has been pressuring with his uh, death zone actually getting a hold onto Fraza But it doesn't matter Toxie and Snoofy has gotten a hold onto Sykes and Auden now with only Srally and Stop Me ready to uh, contest the payload This does look to be a capture in favor of uh, Crisis due to the very fact that the inflame is just being used uh, for apparently a very confusing reason in my opinion, but doesn't matter. There's still overtime ticking. I honestly think that the inflame was just popped there from Furia, just so they can. Put She's got time. She's got plenty of time to recharge it. They just want to take this point and get it started. They want Bloodlust to start rolling, and that's where we're seeing those. Crisis were able to get so far on that point because Ash actually managed to stay alive and regroup with the team. You do not want an Ash to stay alive. That is the one thing you don't want. She's a rally tank. Like in Nara, she can get her entire team behind her and start moving forward and pressuring that point. And that's what we've seen right now as Darfurt gets destroyed by Rip Julian on the high ground. He's just like, nah fam, this is my domain. <laughs> nah fam, not today. <laughs> Well, uh, we have Sykes here on uh, the Arches here, trying to counter Toxie with a bit of damage, but the Fortress Breaker talent is in full effect, making sure that he can't damage her for some time. But healing is coming through from the Pyre, and he is ready to mingle and mangle again. He has his Dome Shield ready, so he should actually do something about uh, the pressure and the grouped up mentality of Crisis in order to help his squad. I'm just imagining this fortress bigger Ash, like coming up to this old short dwarf man and be like, Sup dude, my shield's bigger! As we can see now Sykes pushing this left hand side. McCall on the high ground, that's not exactly where a turtle's going, but I like the fact that Bloodlust are just controlling that domain so that they can push this through. Once you've got that high ground on the right side of this map for the push, Crisis starts to be in a bit of a bad spot right now, they do not have the advantage. Ash is starting to fight from the low ground and they're getting pushed back hard as Fernando goes down, Snoofy. Just having that respawn timer and it's a 5v4 as we start pushing this through and it's looking like it's bloodlust game again. Wow, wow. Did you see that? Did you see how far Stop Me went just to control the field? He was up there for almost two minutes 1v4 before the fit actually joined him. I'm so impressed. Dang. Yeah. That, that, that's, I, the I'm... <laughs> that's the power of a Leviathan Makoa. Once again, they let it go free. I mean, Crisis, sure, they banned out the Khan, they banned out the Inara, but Inara is not as effective on this map because you have so much high ground pressure on her. I would have just banned out the Makoa, honestly, because he's just such a utilitarian tank. We just check out the uh, healing coming through. Sorry, the net worth on the side. It's going all bloodlust way, Fury Five. topping it up. That solar. That's Three, that Pyre Strike, two, the Solar's Blessing is one. is so powerful right now. As you can see, it's just keeping your entire team alive as they got, continue to go through with this. That is definitely correct, but here we go with round number two here in game number two between Bloodlust and Crisis, and they just chose to say, you know what? Let's just take the point because that's what they went uh, on with from the beginning last round. So let's just uh, continue the success. Getting it already at 45% before we see uh, Assert Dominance being activated here from Toxie to survive a few more seconds. But it doesn't matter because over in Castles, both Snoofy and Fraza was in the deepest trouble imaginable and that is a complete wipe oh, here. That, that turnaround right there, that turnaround though. Darfit actually started with the true power. He staggered the entire team. They got all the focus on him. As soon as you heard Tyler screaming, all of blood, all of Crisis' focus was suddenly on this little talus behind them, and they just got so staggered immediately. They lost focus, and Crisis and Bloodlust were just able to capitalize on that. They lost well, the talus, sure, but Crisis lost their push. <laughs> well, you know what they say: it's always the trolls that screams the loudest. <laughs>
<laughs> but yeah, as you can see, there is three down on the side of Crisis because David and Shrally are just pushing up together. We also have Snoofy uh, in uh, in trouble here. He can't really get out of the spawn here because Sykes and Stop Me are controlling high ground once again. This is not a good situation, especially not with a Dread Tanker connecting onto Rip Julian. Oh no! That is something that's so satisfying. I can tell you, is McCall man getting a hook on Drogo? You feel like a boss. And Ancient Rage is available, so he do not have to worry too much about being aggressive right now. Uh, Dread Surfer get helped out. Dragon Punch to follow. They're gonna try and stop this push. Crisis finds the Makoa. Bloodlust loses one of their tanks, but Crisis loses four of their members. And now oh, with Fate Flight break. activated, dude, there, it's only a matter of time before it's the curtain call for Toxie, and it was. And it's also the curtain call for the set! Ooh. Oh! Oh my lord, that, Love Us just oh. absolutely dominating today, eh? Like, wow, okay. Wow, okay, wow. I, I'm impressed. I am impressed, like, honestly. Yeah, like, I'm impressed with Bloodlust play as a team the whole way through. They're actually functioning as one of the higher level teams. They're coordinating, they're communicating. Crisis, they've got great players. They have the Drogo split. Brit Julian can put out immense amounts of damage. They've got amazing tanks and an amazing healer, but they don't have target prioritization. They can't say, okay, cool, we need to focus this champion down. Get rid of the Willow and focus on the Makoa. They don't have that as a team. And that's something we hope to see them gel well together and progress with further on into the season. <clears throat> and I'm really hoping to see that from them because they've got so much potential as they're going through. But they did let the Makoa and the Willow go basically for free. I yeah, mean, the car but, was a good band, but, mm. what, but what can you do when when you're on Stonekeep <laughs> and you allow Willow through a draft? And the castle is not your place to be. Not anymore. Yeah. And uh, I, I like how, how controlled they were in their... Um, <laughs> Like, I, I like how controlled they were in their decision-making over on uh, Crisis. They really did try to spice it up every single round. But nonetheless, it was to no avail as uh, Bloodlust was simply way too strong for their own good. But uh, GG, well played. Uh, Bloodlust is now at the top of the leaderboards with three legacy points, while Crisis is off with only one. Speaking What's our next? Is, yeah, <coughs> exactly. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Right, sorry to be the downer of bad news, but they're the first team to play. It doesn't mean let, 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 let's, you know, we 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 got a couple of teams coming up, right? Yeah, so we got some phenomenal teams coming up. Uh, next up will be um, Four Now did actually tell me. Now this is the game that I'm in love with. Right, I'm totally, absolutely, freaking crazy about this game. It's I Aiko. In my opinion, one of the underdogs of the uh, of the league versus uh, infected dragons, which some people have been the fourth to fifth seed here in this league. Me personally, I know for a fact they're on form with cri uh, crisis. I also know they uh, are on par with fate, and I'm not sure how they face up against bloodlust, but fate esports, the fire fern, bloodlust, infected dragons, and I do believe. It was Crisis. Those five teams all could, quite frankly, win it. So week one going well so far. And again, guys, thank you ever so much for watching. If you are new to the channel, which most of you are, hit that follow button because it is much appreciated. Also check out the Twitter because we will be doing giveaways. Every week there will be one at least giveaway as soon as I can find the codes. But this week, this week, there will be a giveaway. One random winner will win. A what is this? Um, hang on, I should know what it is. I brought it. It's a <laughs> razor. <laughs> I, I, look, Good I was me. totally okay. Look, I was totally prepared. Okay, it's a <laughs> yeah, totally not a flex. Yeah, yeah, it's a razor death ad death adder. Um, for PC gamers, it's a brand spanking new mouse, never been opened. I'm going to open it now, though. Uh, it's not been open before. <laughs> well, I'm going to open it now. How do I? Open I'm going to open it anyways. <laughs> uh, sorry, GG. Um, that's a pretty good mask. Are you sure we're not allowed to enter that? <laughs> well, no. Here, here, comes, comes, here, here, come, here comes Rudy five, with so the baking. Oh, oh, no. Look, Rudy, look. No staff are allowed to enter this. <clears throat> okay. Nope. Uh, but there, there will be a giveaway for this mouse. It will be on Twitter. I'll take a picture of it and I will show you all and it'll be cool and stuff. Yeah. But 
The next game, let's talk about this. I want to talk about Aiko and Infected Dragons because these two teams are absolutely phenomenal. I happen to know Infected Dragons are one of the most... <clears throat> excuse me, stable rosters in all of Paladins. This team has been around for freaking ever. And just for the yeah, record, Aiko have definitely. the actual best. Uh, have you actually seen the logo, the, the team logo for Aiko? Like, how uh, sick is that? Aiko? Yeah, yeah I Aiko like the logo. Aiko. Aiko. I love it. It's absolutely incredible. It's House of Aiko, man. Everybody loves an underdog story, and I, I really hope they make a deep impact here. They need to. And that's what the MLL is about. It's about inspiring new teams to stick mm -hmm. together and push through it and make that impact. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So, next game will be Aiko versus Vector Dragons. I literally cannot wait for this. First game was Frog Isle. I do believe. Are we going uh, to Frog Isle first? Well, we're going to look at the, the draft uh, very soon. But before that, we are actually going to take a short break before set number two between Ico and Infected Dragons. Thank you so much, Jay, for your hype meters to go off the roof for this second set. And me and the others of the MLL staff will see you all very soon. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Wolfie GG. This is GGJ and ridiculously, ridiculously average. I'm just going to call you Riddick from now on because it's such a difficult name. But we'll see you soon.